marine transfer stations are something that are important to me and my constituency. Our new administration has already done so much, whether it's overturning vetoes on paid sick leave or ending stop and frisk. We must continue to reverse poor policies from the previous administration. I'm here to ask this committee, the speaker, the mayor, and the commissioner of the Department of Sanitation to help reverse yet another bad policy from Mayor Michael Bloomberg. Please join me in stopping the construction of the Marine Transfer Station in Manhattan. Marine transfer stations must not be a waste of money on a billion dollar boondoggle, must not continue a landfill model, must in fact honor five borough equity, must not be built in high risk flood zones, must not be built in residential neighborhoods, must not burden environmental justice in low income communities, and must not harm our children. We must instead adopt a modern approach that reduces costs, increases recycling, and pledges to protect our residential communities and our most vulnerable. Our new administration must engage in responsible budgeting. This marine transfer station started with a cost of $43 million in 2002, quadrupled to $181 million in 2012, and is now estimated by Pledge to Protect in their uh, paper Talking Trash to cost $1 billion over 20 years. This is a billion that could be spending on other budget priorities. In fact, according to the Independent Budget Office report in 2012, the current waste management costs $90 per ton, while this marine transfer station will increase costs to $238 per ton, more than $148 more per ton. The marine transfer station in question will send our trash to landfills, a model that was obsolete the day it was passed in 2006. While New York boasts a 15% recycling rate and seeks to invest a billion dollars into an eight-year-old landfill plan, other cities like San Francisco are already recycling 75% of their waste. This marine transfer station is cited to be built in a FEMA flood zone with the highest flood designation of AE, a location that flooded during Sandy and will flood again. With regards to five borough equity, Manhattan already has a marine transfer station on 59th Street in an industrial location, and this will be Manhattan's second marine transfer station prior to other boroughs having their first. This is the only marine transfer station being built in a residential neighborhood. This reflects poor urban planning by the previous administration that has flipped zoning upside down building commercial and residentially in our industrial neighborhoods and placing industrial uses in our residential neighborhoods. This marine transfer station will burden environmental justice communities, a community I represent, as trash from upper Manhattan makes its way through East Harlem and El Barrio and is taken across the street from a NYCHA development, which I also represent, Stanley Isaacson Homes Towers, we're talking about 1,172 units and 2,278 low-income residents, according to HPD. This administration, our new administration, cannot allow the construction of a marine transfer station across the street from a NYCHA development. We cannot continue the previous administration's tactic of causing environmental harms to those who are least fortunate and least empowered to fight those harms. Trash trucks will drive up to 720 tons per day of residential trash through residential neighborhoods past numerous schools and up a ramp that will bisect a park where 30,000 public school children from the Bronx, Brooklyn, Manhattan, and Queens swim, play, and train to actually win medals in the Olympics, like Leah Neal. We can do better. This is the greatest city in the world. We can adopt a modern approach that reduces costs, increases recycling, and protects our community. Do not move forward with this marine transfer station. Please join me in pledging to protect our budget, pledge to protect our neighborhoods, pledge to protect our low-income residents, pledge to protect our economic justice communities, pledge to protect our children, and pledge to protect our future. Thank you for the liberty of that opening statement. If I can ask some questions. Yes, you may. 
what is the projected full cost of the marine transfer station and the projected cost for exporting this waste over the next 20 years? The, what do we got on the floor? Yeah, oh, okay. The, the cost of it, uh, we project, is going to be $190 million to build a tra marine transfer station. And that um, may be adjusted, and some of the numbers may be in there already, to uh, address the concerns about the flooding uh, that was experienced in Sandy, where there was high water. Uh, that's been done. The Corps of uh, Engineers has approved our permits uh, and approved what we're doing. Uh, so uh, we are um, have a good transfer station, a safe transfer station. Uh, we've pointed out in the past if there is a storm or flooding, or we're concerned about that. All the waste is contained in containers. The containers will be removed off the facility, both empty containers and full containers, so that they would not get out into the waterway should that catastrophe happen. So we've make, taken every step to ensure it's a sound, clean and efficient operation. The solid waste management plan is based on borough sustainability. Each borough has to be responsible for their waste. This was a plan that was approved by the city council. This is a plan that we intend to follow and we continue to follow it. That facility is needed. It's all part of the integral part of getting rid of the waste in New York City. If we have a problem in one area, we have to offload material to another area to get out of the city. When we went through uh, Storm Sandy, we had a very difficult time getting waste out of this city because there was problems with the waste disposal network. Railroad lines were washed out in places in the city. Places on the Jersey Shore had flooded. We couldn't get it out. We just about made it every day. We need a good, robust, solid waste management plan for this city if we're going to pick up the garbage from everybody's home every couple of days and get rid of it. If we can't get rid of it, it sits there. This is part of a very important plan for the future for New York City. And although people will disagree about it, nobody likes a sanitation garage next to them, nobody likes a sanitation facility next to them, but they are part of the city's infrastructure. It's something that we must have in this city to provide the service to the public of the city that they deserve. For the okay. purpose of, of brevity, if you could answer the question I ask, uh, we well, can. You took a long time to talk to me, so I figured it'd take a while to get back to you. No too, problem. So. Uh, you didn't actually answer my question, so it's $190 million in capital costs. Right. What are the adjustments, and then what is the over 20 year uh, cost to run this facility? What, what is the operation cost? I haven't figured out the 20 years, but it's going to be expensive. I never said it was cheap. Nobody will ever say it's cheap. Did you, this is did an expensive you see the operation. Pledge to Protect report that indicates it's going to cost a billion dollars. I don't know what the backing is for that money, but it's expensive. I agree it's expensive. I don't know if 20 million is the number or not. I'm not going to, you know, go into the details of that, but it is expensive. No question about it. Just like every transfer station in the city is expensive. So uh, the Independent Budget Office has says said it's going to be expensive. It's going to go up from $90 a ton right. to $238 a ton, an increase of $148 per ton. Um, you, you may not care about expensive. We have to. We have to protect $70 billion and make sure it goes to important uses like education, homeless services, foster care. Um, can you please just address why it's worth spending $148 more per ton? It's this. part of the solid waste management plan that was approved by the city council. Is one we're going to follow. And yes, the cost is going to go up from what we're paying now, about $92 a ton citywide to get rid of waste. And all the transfer stations that we build are going to cost us more to get rid of waste in the city. We decided, the city decided, the council and the, uh, the administration at the time decided that trucking of waste throughout to other parts of the country is not the best way to go and that some communities in the city were inundated with private transfer stations that need not be there. This solid waste management plan was to address those issues and it is addressing those issues. Well, how many of the marine transfer stations have been built to date from the solid waste management plan? We have Hamilton, A Hamilton Avenue will be completed by uh, next year and so and um, Later this year, or later this year, it should be completed, actually. And later this year, I expect that the North Shore Marine Transfer Station will be operational probably later this fall. We'll start taking material in there. 
and then we will build 90, uh, 91st Street, we already started it, and then we'll follow it with the Southwest Marine Transfer Station. Where does the, where, where do you send, what's going to happen to the trash? So it's going to it's go, go into the Marine Transfer Station, it's going to get put on a barge, and then where does that barge go? The barge is going to go, in the case of North Shore, it's going to go to the, uh, to the transfer, to the Marine Unloading Place out in, uh, out in Staten Island, uh, New York Container Terminal. It's a uh, container terminal. Ships from all over the world come in there. We will have a berth out there where the barges will come to. They'll be unloaded off the barges, put it onto railroad cars. There's a rail line out there, and that waste will probably go to locations in the south and in the uh, west of this city. And what about 91st? 91st Street will also go to Staten Island in containers and put on rail uh, going uh, to waste management landfill. So no waste we're going to take landfill. garbage trucks from all over Manhattan, from down at uh, 13 State Street at the tip of Manhattan, drive them all the way up to 91st Street, put it on a barge, take it from a barge, take it to Staten Island. Uh, all the barge fumes, all that are going to blow all over to Manhattan, Queens, Brooklyn, Staten Island. Uh, we're we're going to once again go back to putting all of our trash back at Staten Island. We're going to transfer it from uh, a barge in Staten Island and then put it on various forms of transportation to go, to, and, and these are going to landfills. Yes, it is. So um, g is that a, a modern approach? Is that what other cities well, are doing? Well, if one wants to look at the environmental impact, we th I said earlier, we're taking probably 50,000, huge number of road miles off, I don't remember off the top of my head, by not using the long haul. Two, we're getting rid of uh, some transfer stations that we're not as efficient or we're just not as good as the ones we are building. The, the 91st Street Marine Transfer Station and the other three marine transfer stations are up to date. They have all kinds of air controls on them. There's going to be negative pressure in there, so any air that comes into the building will be sucked in. It will be filtered out before it leaves the building, and there will be no, nothing escaping from the building. So I mean to say that, plus the fact that when you say you want to get something from downtown Manhattan, go, where's it going to go? Is it going to go through the, the village? Is it going to go through another part of Manhattan? So in other words, if it comes to you, it's no good. But if it goes to the over the west side of Manhattan, it's fine. You can drive the truck that way, or you can drive it to Staten Island. So it's where, acceptable where are they to do it that going? way. Where, 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 so where is the waste currently going at, at $90 a ton? They're currently going to Jersey. Okay, so instead of my waste from Manhattan, us taking care of our own waste in Manhattan and sending it to New Jersey where they want it, they, they enjoy getting $90 a ton for that. You want me to send my waste to Staten Island in the name of, of Five Borough Equity. It is equal it, to send Manhattan by trash to Staten Island. It's going by barge to Staten Island. It's not going by truck. It's going by barge. With the, the latest technology of the tugs, we're going to meet the air standards. We're going to get new tugs in just to get that... Uh, to handle the waste that's going to be barged out over there. Are, are the, the new uh, environmental controls on the tugs part of the solid waste management plan? No, they weren't. We added that on later on, yes. They weren't part of the original plan, no. We've added that on. So, they're, they're as a, so we've amended the solid waste management plan to require tugs to have... We, I don't know that we amended the plan. We, just, we agreed, based on discussions with the community, that we would upgrade the environmental standards on the emissions from the truck tugs that we would use to uh, barge that waste, uh, to tow the barges uh, away from 91st Street and out to Staten Island. So if you could, um, ben, if you could do me a favor, Council Member Kalos, and maybe ask uh, one more question, a final question, just because we have Council Members that also want to speak to this issue. I, I appreciate uh, all of my colleagues indulging me. This is obviously a very important issue to me, and I, I hope some of the answers that have come to light uh, that uh, to my colleague, uh, uh, Councilmember Mateo, that, Matteo, sorry, that uh, I, I would prefer not to send my trash from my borough to your borough. I, I don't think that that's uh, environmental uh, justice, and I don't think that's five borough equity. I think it's actually taking a, a burden from New Jersey, which is not a borough, as far as I'm aware of, uh, and, and sending it where, where it shouldn't be. Um, Los Angeles is at 45% recycling. Uh, San Francisco is at 75%. There are countries that are now waste zero. It is 2014. It is no longer 2006. You, you do not have that many marine transfer stations operational. Uh, I, I feel that the solid waste management plan 
having taken that long ha has been a, a failure. We now have a chance to learn from everyone else in the world, leave the 15% recycling rate that we have, which is embarrassing, behind us and achieve something else. Can New York City achieve better recycling and not need to have these marine transfer stations to landfills? We are reducing our waste. Waste is being reduced each and every day. It's been going down for, an, for quite a while now. We are doing recycling. We're going to do more recycling. I told you all the projects that we're working on in recycling. We're starting food waste composting. How that's going to work, we will see. And when you talk about 75 percent or 80 percent or zero, there is no zero. I don't know where you're going, but there is no zero getting rid of waste. There's always going to be something out there that has to be picked up and disposed of some, in some manner. But when you look at these other places, and I talk about the West Coast, one of the fundamental differences, do you pay to get rid of your garbage from New York? Do you see how much you have to pay every day when you put a can out or a bag out? No. You don't see that. It's in the taxes. Every other community out there, they see a bill every month. They want to recycle, they get a small garbage can. They don't want to recycle, they get a big garbage can. They pay a lot more money each month for that big garbage can. That's an incentive that is very difficult to put into a city like New York where the waste disposal fee is in your taxes. Nobody's been willing to do that, and it's very complicated to do it. How do you do it in an apartment building? You're going to put a meter there or something for everybody that lives in an apartment and say how many bags of garbage they put out and then charge them to get them to recycle? So it's a difficult program. It's no doubt about it. This city is a difficult city. And when you look at these other cities that have these great the recycling rates, you've got to look what can they count. What are they counting? What does the bill, the recycling bill, Local Law 19, allow us to count when we talk about 15%? There's things in there we can't count. I think this council at some point has to sit down with the next commissioner and talk about Local Law 15 and what can be counted and what should be counted in that diversion rate, the curbside diversion rate. We look at the city's diversion rates, probably over 30 percent. A lot of that is material that is uh, commercial material. These other big cities, when they're talking about it, they're talking about commercial material. Not only that, you have one contractor probably that handles all the residential and all the commercial waste and they count everything. They count everything that's in a scrapyard. They count everything that's out there that gets recycled. We don't have that ability to do that yet. We're working on it and we have to get better at it. Once we start get capturing that information, we're going to see our numbers change and that's something that will have to be addressed in the, cellar waste, in the uh, local law at some point about what we should count in on our curbside program to show what New York City is really doing on recycling. You, you've got my pledge to work with you on that. I'm happy to do any incentives that we can. If Los Angeles is doing it and they're doing it better, New York City's better. We can do it. Great. Thank I appreciate